Hi guys, James at Rampant Lion Reviews again for you today with another beer review. For this one we are going to do another Swedish beer and this is a brewery that I've wanted to try for quite a wee while actually. I'm really interested to see what these guys are doing. So a special thank you to my friend Andreas at Ulrizan who recommended this brewery to me and I was able to order some through at System Bolaget. So for this one we're going to head up towards the Stockholm area to a little town called Ekeru which is of course home to Nordic Kiwi Brewers. So the beer we're having a taste of today is called Endless Summer. It's a New England IPA coming in at 6.3% and uh, it's hopped with all New Zealand hops, which should be really cool. If you've watched the channel for a few years or if you haven't, I went back to New Zealand back in uh, 2015. I reviewed some of the, the Kiwi craft beers down there and uh, they really were top quality. You know, the, the hops that they have down there are really just something special. They're completely different from the American hops, from the Slovenian hops, German hops. Wherever you go, you know, they are just very unique in their fruitiness and things like that. And basically, this is two Kiwi guys who live in, um, in in Sweden and brew beers using all all New Zealand hops. So I think that's really quite cool. So definitely looking forward to this beer. And as always, I hope you guys enjoy my take on it then. So anyway, as is usual with my reviews, I'll tell you a little bit about the brewery. If you want to get straight to the tasting, just fast forward. All the usual links are in the description below. That's the brewery website, the link to my other reviews that I'll do in the future from Nordic Kiwi Brewers. I do have two more of their beers that you'll see appear fairly soon. There's all the usual social media. If you want to see more beer reviews, do please consider subscribing to the channel. The whole channel, of course, has a geography-based tagging system, so you can go into the homepage and search for beers based on country, city, state, county, prefecture, whatever it is you're interested in. Do check out the playlist of beers from different countries. There is one there for all the Swedish beers that I've reviewed for you. There is one for the New Zealand beers as well, if you're interested. And as always, please do get in touch and let me know some of the other beers and breweries that you guys would like to see me review. It's always great to hear from you guys that are watching the videos and the support that you show the channel channel is hugely appreciated. So anyway, to tell you a little bit about Nordic Kiwi Brewers then. So as I mentioned to you, Nordic Kiwi Brewers are based in Ekeru, which is to the west of Stockholm, and they were founded by two New Zealanders, Craig Donovan and Karen Beatty, back in 2016. So apparently they began home brewing because Swedish beer is really quite expensive actually, there's quite a high tax on it, but soon when they were doing that they began buying hops from Nelson in New Zealand where they've grown hops for about 150 years actually, but they later decided to set up a commercial brewery and they found a really good site for this in Ekeru and most of the equipment they were using was actually found on Blocket, which is essentially Sweden's uh, equivalent of Gumtree if you like, for those of you watching further afield. Uh, but Karen apparently met his Swedish lady in New Zealand and then the pair moved to London together and he spent some time working in the construction and industry there before they return to Sweden and Karen works full time at the brewery while Craig is part time and he also works for Ericsson as well. He works in things like sustainability and stuff like that but the niche of this brewery essentially is that they brew all their beers using only New Zealand hops which is very unique actually for Europe. A lot of breweries will use a little bit of Australian hops of course you've got the likes of Galaxy and uh, Victoria's Secret and stuff like that they're making headway over here but it is actually quite unusual for, um, for breweries these days to use New Zealand hops especially so New Zealand hops. So I think that's pretty cool actually. These guys are sort of breaking down one of these barriers because honestly when I went to New Zealand I was really really impressed with the hops and um, you know Raka, one of the hops that's in this beer is one that I really really enjoyed. But if you get the chance to go to New Zealand I really recommend it. Wellington is supposed to be a very good beer city unfortunately I never got to visit it when I was there. So that's another thing that I need to check off my list um, but the North but the, the the Kiwi beers are very, very high quality and it's quite exciting to find uh, a brewery like this that are brewing New Zealand type beers in Sweden. Quite unusual. So yeah, that's all you really need to know about the brewery. If you want to keep up to date with them, you can follow them on Facebook. I'll put the brewery website in the description below. They do have a good few different beers. I think there was about 25 or so listed on Rate Beer when I checked them out earlier. Um, but yeah, for a brewery that's only been around about two years, 25 is fairly prolific. So yeah, uh, as I say, check out the links and stuff in the description below. But if you want to, we'll get straight onto the tasting with this beer now. I'm really interested to see how this guy turns out. So basically they've said, with their artwork and things, they like to take a little bit of the Maori artwork and put it on the uh, on the cans here. And you can kind of see that with these sort of styles of drawings and things that they've got. And uh, I remember one of the things, I was thinking with some of the names of the hops, like Kohatu, I'm sure that's like the Maori word for rock or something like that. I remember having a Bionicle, one of these Lego Technic things that was called Pohatu, and there was a whole, um, you know, 
lawsuit between the Maoris and uh, and Lego for using these Maori names, if you like. Um, but yeah, it was really, it's you know, really quite cool actually. You know, it's, it's cool, I guess, for one of the native peoples down there to get that kind of publicity. But yeah, it's cool as well. I like that in New Zealand how they, they you know, they do use the uh, the Maori names and stuff like that. Some of the artwork you get from the Maoris on these little houses and stuff is uh, is beautiful. But on the side here it says, "What's the story? Nordic Kiwi Burrows was founded by two Kiwi fellas on a mission to showcase the finest New Zealand hops." Tropical aromas and exotic fl uh, flavours combine to give you a unique taste of the new world right here in the old one. We call this duality Nordic Heart Southern Soul. It says, Our endless summer New England style IPA is a juicy, hazy, tropical fruit bomb loaded with notes of blood orange, mandarin and other tropical goodness. Kiwis tend to wear their jandals, uh, which is flip-flops, year-round. And likewise, this brew can be enjoyed at any time of the year. Cheryl, Karen and Craig. There you can see you there faces on the side there, I think that's quite cool actually, just let the camera focus on that, but yeah, the Maori artwork on this one I think is really cool. The hops in this one are Kohatu, Rakao, Nelson Sovian and Waiiti. Nelson Sovian of course is quite a popular one, that's the one that gives you green grapes. I took a few notes on these hops um, just because I think that's quite a cool thing when they're hops that don't come up so often. So Kohatu is supposed to give you a little bit of a limey character, some pineapple and pine. It's one of the lower alpha acid ones that you're going to get in New Zealand actually. Nelson Sovian like I mentioned is a sort of green grapey, almost gooseberry kind of flavour that you'll get out of that. Rakao is supposed to give you sort of peaches, mangoes and a little bit of uh, apricot essentially, there's a kind of stone fruity element to that one and Waiiti, I've had a be couple of beers with Waiiti in it recently, it's one that gives you the sort of mojito um, lime character as well and it's also supposed to give you some other stone fruits as well but yeah really nice selection of hops in this one and um, so without further ado let's get this guy out and we'll get on with the tasting then, like I say a 6.3% New England type IPA so yeah let's get it out and we'll get on with the glass or with the tasting, sorry, I'm saying the glass. Brain's not working today. Stuttering a little bit in this video, which I don't normally do, of course. But as soon as you open this beer up, you can smell some of those fruity notes. It's the limey and kind of peaches, I think, that are coming out of this one. So, yeah. As you can see with this beer, it's poured a nice, kind of dark, golden yellow colour, this one. There's a solid... I would say two-third finger of a frothy white head on this one. One or two big bubbles sticking towards the side of the glass and a few little ones just heading up towards the bottom of that head there. If I put my fingers behind the glass, you can see it is pretty opaque, actually. It looks really, really nice. So, yeah, let's just take a little bit of time and uh, enjoy the aroma of this one before we get stuck in. It looks pretty much as you would expect for, the, uh, for a New England-type IPA. Oh, yeah. It really does bring me back that... I, you know, I had such a good time with those beers in New Zealand. I really wish I got to review more. I definitely need to get back out there. I'd love to go and work there for a year. And do some teaching or something like that. And just enjoy the New Zealand beers for a year. It, this is... It really does bring me back, this. So, yeah, with this one, you can smell on the malt base. There's that kind of oaty sort of creaminess to the beer, you can definitely pick up some of the white wheaty bread, maybe a little bit of a biscuity quality in there, pretty much as you would expect from the malt base in a New England IPA. Some grass, um, some kind of floral aromatic notes, a little bit of the piney resin as well, which I think is the Kohatu. But on the fruity side of things, it really is nice. There's definitely some mangoes in there. You can pick up, mixing with the grassy notes, you can pick up that sort of green grapey, uh, almost gooseberry note from the the Nelson Sovian, that sticks out quite a bit, but it's got a lot more complexity to that. Some of the stronger fruits from the, the you know, the limey notes are coming out of this from, from the Y-E-T. The Y-E-T limey notes are really sticking out of this as well. But yeah, some apricots, I think a bit of pineapple or something as well. I'm not really getting the oranges and things that they were saying in this one. I think it's more sort of mangoes, peaches, pineapple sort of thing, maybe even a bit of apricot. I think it's definitely more along the lines of that. I think it's got a good limey quality to it as well, which is interesting. But the green grapes, the sort of green grapey notes from the, the Nelson Sovian are quite apparent in this one. And they're mixing with the, the grassy flavours as well, the grassy aromas, I should say. But yeah, it smells lovely, this beer. The thing you'll notice with the New Zealand hops, i found, is that they have this really distinctive, soft juiciness to the aroma. And it also comes out in the flavour. They're not quite as... Um, they do have the same alpha acid content, but the fruity qualities that you get from them are just a little bit better. Probably the, cro the, the, the cro closest 
hop I think I've probably found to a New Zealand one elsewhere is the Styrian Wolf from Slovenia. It's got this lovely juicy melon quality. The Slovenian beers actually that I've been reviewing recently, they do kind of remind me of what the New Zealand ones were like. That's maybe why I like them so much actually. But yeah, let's take a taste of this one then and see how we get on. So this one is the Endless Summer from Nordic Kiwi Brewers in Ekeru outside of Stockholm in Sweden. Let's get stuck in. Slange it, skull. Yeah, took a little bit of that down the wrong way. But that's a nice beer. I like how this one's kind of coming across. I will say you can tell a little bit that it's not at its freshest, this one. But, you know, there's not much we can do with that. Say Stembo Lagat, you know, they, they, they take a little bit of time to deliver stuff and things like that. So it's not quite in its prime, this beer. But you can tell, you know, it is good quality. So let's start with the malt base of this one then. You can feel a little bit of that pale malt quality. That just goes right across the middle of your palate there. As you go further into the aftertaste, I think you get a little bit of the, the kind of oatiness coming out. The oatiness takes a little bit of time to come out in this one. I don't. There's not dextrose or anything to this one. This one's a little bit more of a kind of straight up malt base rather than having the kind of creamy dextrose type things to it. This one is a little bit more straight up, I would say, than some of the other uh, New England IPAs that you're going to come across. It is a sort of pure malt malt base, if you like. But um, with this one, if you go to the centre of your palate as well, you can get a little bit of a biscuity sweetness. It's got almost a little bit of a kind of bread and buttery quality to it, which is, is quite interesting too. And as I say, the oaty notes start to come out of it a little bit later on as you go further into the aftertaste, but you can definitely feel that sort of nice pale malty quality sort of uh, forming the base of this one. The malt base is pretty much as you would expect, but like I say, it's not quite as creamy as some of the other New England IPAs that you're going to come across. It's got a little bit more of that almost West Coast uh, mouthfeel to it, which is quite nice. But yeah, again, the way the fruitiness comes out of this beer is really nice. That's the, you know, that's the kind of key thing when it comes to New Zealand hops, it's all about the sort of fruity characters that you get from the beer. And this is really nice. I mean, at the back corners of the palate, let's take the hoppy side of the beer now. Back corners of the palate, you get a little bit of earthiness as you come further forward. There's maybe a little touch of herbal quality in there, but towards the front corner of the palate, you can pick up, there is a little touch of that piney resonance, which if I remember rightly, was that would be the Kohatu that's giving you that. But there's also a bit of spicy floral aromatic note, which will be the other hops. And then round the very front curve of the palate, you'll get this nice, lighter, sort of a grassy flavour out of the beer. And of course, the fruity notes, you get this little oily bubble behind the front curve of your palate, and that's where the fruity notes start to come out of the beer. And yeah, this one's all about the tropical fruit. But yeah, with this one, it's got a sort of base, there's a sort of stronger tropical fruit there. It's not quite grapefruit or anything like that. It's maybe the sort of peaches, the sort of peachy flavours to this one, I think, are sitting in the uh, the front of the bar. I'm guessing, I think that's the Rakow that would give you the peachy flavours. Um, but yeah, that sort of peachy note is kind of sitting there. The limey notes from the YET are quite strong in this one as well. Really, the lime and the peaches, I think, are the two mainstays of the, the fruity side of the beer. But as you progress further into the aftertaste, you start to get the more kind of subtle things out of it. You start to get a little bit of apricot, I think. That's when, and it's when the, the Nelson Sovine starts to come out a little bit as well. You start to get the gooseberry, the kind of green, white, grapey sort of flavours as well, which is, is a really nice. There's a little touch of pineapple in there, I think, as well, and apricots, like I was saying, the sort of stone fruity notes. So it starts off, I think, quite strong. You've got a little bit of that peachy note in there. You've got a little bit of the, um, as I was saying, you've got a little bit of the the limey flavour in there as well. The lime is kind of holding this one together and the peachy flavours. They're the mainstays, I think, that are giving you the stronger flute flavours. But as you go further and further into the aftertaste of this one, you get the green grapes, the gooseberries, 
the sort of apricot flavours as well and a bit of the pineapple and things. It's got a really interesting flavour combination this one. There's a lot going on in this beer and of course that is one of the main things with the um, with the New Zealand hops, the Rakau hop, I really I always remember that name. The Rakau hop was one that I really enjoyed. I think when I was in New Zealand back in 2015, um, that had only just come out, and a lot of brewers were really starting to uh, to experiment with that. I want to say it was maybe Behemoth. I remember drinking this beer that had a sort of robot on the label, and it was called the Rakau IPA, and it really was a beautiful beer. That I really enjoyed that one, and so the Rakau hop is one that I'll always remember because of that beer. But yeah, for me, this is a nice beer, this one. In terms of the New England IPA, it's not quite as creamy and oaty as you might expect from the style. It's definitely more got a sort of um, straight-up malt base, if you like. It's more of a kind of almost German-like malt base, if you can say that, actually, about this beer. But it's a really, um, it's definitely done really nicely. That I wouldn't hesitate to drink this beer again. I'd love to try it on tap actually and just see if the mouth feels that little bit more uh, kind of creamy, if you like. But there's the mouth feels a kind of minor thing. It's all about the flavours that you get out of this beer, and the hoppy side of this beer is of course where the beer shines. The malt base. Is, is you know it's fine this one the malt base in this one is pretty good but it's more of a grainy malt base it doesn't quite have the creaminess you'd expect of the New England style but it's it's a nice beer that I wouldn't hesitate to drink again and that's the main thing I, I definitely will be trying more from this brewery like I said I've got another two but I'll definitely try and make sure to get more beyond that from this from from uh, these guys it's an interesting concept they've kind of uh, put together and they seem to be doing quite well with it of course uh, in terms of the mouthfeel then. Mid-bodied beer, carbonation is quite smooth on this one. It's a kind of oily, wet mouthfeel to this one. You would expect a New England IBA to be a little bit more creamy, like I was saying. So maybe I uh, maybe making the malt base of this one a little bit more creamy would be interesting. I think making New England type IPAs with the New Zealand hops would be a really interesting experiment. Uh, but the malt base, there's a little bit of sweetness there. Mainly it's quite a smooth malt base, like I was saying. Good little bit of hoppy bitterness to the beer. I guess it's maybe somewhere around the kind of um, the sort of sixty. No, maybe I'm not sure about that. It's maybe around the sort of 40 IBU mark, I would say. It's probably somewhere around that. It's not, I don't think it's quite strong enough to be 60, actually. Yeah. This one's like sort of 40-ish IBUs, I would say. It's somewhere around there. So not the biggest hoppy bit of nurse you're going to get, but that's you don't expect that from the New England style, to be honest. A lot of nice juicy fruit in this one. As I say, malt base is smooth. has a little bit of sweetness to it, but overall, it's a nice beer, this one. I've heard, though, that this one isn't the best one they do. Some other, other people were uh, recommending other ones to me, so I'm really interested to review the other ones that I've got in the fridge and see how we get on with those. But this one... Certainly a really nice beer, wouldn't hesitate to drink it again, and it's got a really good mix of hops. With this one you've got the Rakau beer. I'd love to see these guys actually do, you know, a Rakau single hop New England IPA, because I think that would be a really, really interesting beer. That would be an awesome one to uh, to see from them at some point. So maybe they will do it, but who knows. But yeah, this was my first review from Nordic Kiwi Brewers. I'm satisfied with it. It's a nice beer, and I certainly wouldn't hesitate to drink it again. So let's leave it at that. So this one was the Endless Summer from the Nordic Kiwi Brewers up in Ekeru, just outside of Stockholm. A really interesting beer, this one, and I certainly look forward to trying other ones. So until the next time, thank you for watching my beer reviews. Please like, subscribe, share, all the usual YouTube stuff. Let me know your own thoughts on this one in the comment section below. Let me know what your favourite beers are from the Nordic Kiwi Brewers as well. You will see two more videos from me on these guys fairly soon so I hope you look forward to those and I will catch you guys very soon. Make sure you try their beers if you get the chance. They're doing some really interesting stuff judging by this beer. Slanted just now. Skull.